it's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton. Right, this one's about time to do a nice coffee. Hi guys, welcome to the third video which is looking at the uh, effect upon equilibrium that different um, changes can have. Uh, the first one I looked at was concentration, the second one was pressure, and this video is going to be all about temperature changes. Okay. So first of all what you need to understand is um, trying to think about um, what effect temperature will have upon a reaction. Okay. We've got two types of reactions that we can look at. All right. We've got endothermic reactions all right, and we've got exothermic reactions. Okay, now obviously you guys know that endothermic reactions, you want heat or energy to go in. Okay, with an exothermic reaction, you are trying to put heat out. Okay, so what you need to think about is that temperature is just a version of, of heat energy that's going into the reaction. So you've got to try and think about what effect that's going to have upon an exo or an endothermic reaction. Okay, an endothermic reaction wants energy, it wants heat. So if you put heat into it, okay, if you increase the temperature, that's going to favour an endothermic reaction. Okay? So increasing the temperature is going to favour the endothermic reaction. If you decrease the temperature, you've got to think about what it's like. An exothermic reaction is trying to get rid of energy. Okay? Think about yourself. If you're, if you're really, really um, you know, hot on a hot day, it's a lot easier to cool down all right, or to get rid of your excess heat if you go somewhere cool. So if you go into an air-conditioned room, you're able to get rid of your excess heat energy much more easily than if you stand outside in the 30, 40 degree weather. Okay? So if you decrease the temperature, okay, that favours the exothermic reaction. Okay, so you really need to understand why um, one reaction is favoured over the other. Okay, exothermic reaction, lower temperatures means it's easy to get rid of the heat to the surroundings, so that's favoured. Endothermic reaction, if you increase the temperature, more energy coming into the reaction, so it's going to favour that one. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to have a look at a specific reaction. Okay, and we're going to have a look at what effect um, changing the temperature has upon the concentrations of the species by doing some graphs. So I'm going to try and colour code this again like I've done last time. So for this reaction what I'm going to be doing is a um, fairly straightforward one. Uh, I'm going to be doing hydrogen gas, all right, reacting with iodine gas, okay, H2 plus I2, that forms an equilibrium with hydrogen iodide. Okay, here. Now, um, I don't actually know off the top of my head what the enthalpy value is for this reaction, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that delta H is plus uh, 27 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so I've just put a generic number on there, it doesn't really matter what it is, but for the purpose of this video I've done plus 27, and so what we are looking at is that this reaction is endothermic. All right? Positive value means it's endothermic, which means that an increase in temperature is going to favour this reaction. Now, in any reaction, all right, there's um, obviously a forward and a back reaction when we're looking at equilibrium. All right? So if the forward reaction is endothermic, it makes sense that the back reaction is exothermic. Okay? So if we increase the temperature, we're going to favour the forward reaction, which is endothermic. If we decrease the temperature, the back reaction, which is exothermic, is actually going to be favoured instead. So let's draw up a graph and see what it looks like. So here we go. All right. And for this one, what we're going to do is we are going to increase the temperature. Okay. So we're actually going to favour our forward reaction, which is endothermic. All right. So initially we have some hydrogen and some iodine. So here's our hydrogen initially. Okay. Here's our iodine initially. Okay. Again, it doesn't matter what the actual values of these are for the moment. There's no hydrogen iodide to begin with, so it reacts, and here it is here. Okay, so there's our hydrogen iodide. We get to a point where slopes of all of them are zero, so what we have done is establish equilibrium. Once we've established equilibrium, we're going to introduce our change. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is increase the temperature. Increasing that temperature is going to favour the forward reaction because that's endothermic. All right, so we're putting energy in means that this reaction is much more favoured. So our hydrogen and iodine are going to be used up and we're going to produce more hydrogen iodide. Now unlike the concentration and pressure changes where we had one of or two of the species or all of them going up or down straight away, that doesn't happen. We don't change the initial concentration. All we do is shift the equilibrium to the right 
to favour the formation of the hydrogen iodide, which means that the um, concentrations are going to change in response to that. So our hydrogen iodide is going to go up by 2x value. All right? Because it's a 1, 1, 2 ratio. Our hydrogen is going to go down by a ratio of 1x. Okay? And our hydrogen is going to also go down by a value of 1x as well. Okay? Keeping that 1 to 1 to 2 ratio. Now obviously if we were going to go the opposite way and decrease the temperature, what would happen is that the back reaction would be favoured, our hydrogen iodide would go down and our hydrogen uh, and iodine would both go up. The important thing to know about temperature effect all right, is that unlike concentration and pressure where the Kc value doesn't change, Kc does change. Okay, So if you change the temperature or use the temperature in a specific way, all right, either increasing or decreasing, you do affect your equilibrium constant value. And that's because you don't have your graph going up or down straight away all right, with your concentration or pressure change. So that's important thing to know. All right, there is one final thing you can do, which is uh, using a catalyst, and I haven't done a separate video on that, purely because a catalyst just simply allows your equilibrium to be obtained faster. So all that does, in a sense, if we were to show on one of these graphs, if we used a catalyst, it would just mean that this hydrogen would come down and actually get to this horizontal slope faster. Right? That's all the catalyst does, provides an alternative reaction pathway, lower activation energy, and helps align particles in the correct orientation. So in terms of equilibrium, it doesn't affect the Kc value, it doesn't affect equilibrium concentrations, it just lets you get to equilibrium faster. That's why I haven't done another video on it. Hopefully this makes sense. You might want to watch these a couple of times. Make sure you can do these graphs. Okay? Make sure you understand the effect of temperature, concentration, and pressure on the position of an equilibrium. And um, yeah, if there's any questions, just ask. Thanks, guys.